Hello, and welcome to the Narrator Roundtable. I'm Deanna Anthony, one of your co-hosts today, and I'm joined by my fellow co-host, Andre Santana. What's up? Hey, girl. Hey. Hey. And Lindsay Dorcas. Hey, girl. Hello. Yes. Hello. <laughs> Doing great. Doing great. Good, good. good. Um, so, I mean, I just want to talk about some light stuff this time. You know, like existing while narrating. <laughs> yeah. Am I right? I mean, mm. whether we identify as single, as coupled, or as otherwise entangled, wink, wink, <laughs> we are all endeavoring to live a life as we do this beautiful work of audiobook narration. So taking that into account, right, along with the prep, the research, the technical requirements, the production schedule, and the craft of storytelling, creating time and space for a life can really be challenging sometimes. So that's why I am so excited that my beautiful and talented friend and contemporary is today's co-host, Patrice Williams. Bow, 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 bow. <laughs> <laughs> because she's up for the challenge, okay? She's a multidisciplinary artist and an entrepreneur, a member of SAG-AFTRA and the Actors Equity Association and the Audio Publishers Association and the proud mom of two. Welcome, Patrice. Come on. Hi, everyone. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me, guys. I'm excited. <laughs> I'm so glad you said yes. So before we really jump into talking about these things, Patrice, could you share in this moment, what are you currently doing for your career? Right? So like job wise, you know, gig wise, because you and I have a lot of crossover in, uh, you know, the type of work that we do. So can you just kind of rattle off what you got going on right now? Oh, my goodness. So in the midst of uh, narrating uh, books, um, I also uh, sing. And with that, um, my husband and I, we run a business called um, Living Jade, um, which is basically a um, music um, agency in which we um, provide live entertainment for weddings and corporate events. Um, so, you might have seen me at somebody's wedding <laughs> or a special event and such. Um, so that's something that I uh, really love um, and enjoy doing. Um, I also, um, and in the midst of auditioning for other VO work, um, more so specifically uh, commercials, um, as well as auditioning for film, television, and uh, the thing that started it all, my first love, the theater. Um, so there's a lot of uh, uh, a jambalaya, <laughs> per se, um, in the pot. Um, but I, I love it. I love it all. I love it all. Mm, jambalaya. And it is delicious. I mean, <laughs> how much time is there actually in a day, right? Because for all the things you're talking about, because you really touched on something I think a lot of people don't realize that auditioning is the mm -hmm. work, right? And mm -hmm. then the gig is almost like the gravy. It's kind of like the dessert after the main course of you kind of putting yourself out there um, and preparing the meal, you know, chopping the vegetables and sauteing the meat and things like that would be you studying, right? Getting that cred, getting your skills um, for audio work, getting your space together, right? Mm -hmm. That you're going to record in. Mm -hmm. So... In a typical day, as an audiobook narrator, I'm just curious, besides physical narration in the booth, what else do you have to do? Oh, gosh. Um, well, currently right now, the two-year-old is at home. So when I'm not tending to her, that's when I'm typically reading or doing all of the administrative tasks. Um, it's been very different this particular season with her, uh, cause unlike my son, I was able to do all of the things while he was, up. um, just the type of kid that he is. He was very, um, good at, uh, independent play. 
Um, so with her, I really have to compartmentalize my day. So if it, even if it means just doing something for five minutes, that's just some, I've given myself grace. That's something to just like check off the list, you know, along with just, you know, making lunch, prepping dinner, um, you know, cause we do have to eat, you know, <laughs> What? No. (laughs) Thank you. Remember that? Oh, yeah, I need to eat. Um, So cleaning, laundry. um, I know a lot of people that particularly outsource some things. Um, I used to outsource laundry, but right now I'm I'm in the space in which laundry is actually with, with where I'm staying. So I don't have to outsource that anymore. Um, but it's literally just trying to run a household all at the same time and just get it at the current season until she starts school in the fall. It's get it in where I can fit it in. Yeah. Yeah. So like you mentioned, um, compartmentalization, which is something I really want to talk about. I think, (laughs) I think that's a great skill. You know, I'm even maybe thinking about putting that on my resume like as a skill because not everybody does it not everybody does it well let's dive into that um compartmentalization because the the more I do this work I'm finding I need almost the same downtime Mm -hmm. as I do active right yeah and then the other thing I'm seeing is that Instead of being successful at multitasking, which I was taught, I I was trained, right? First corporate job, that's what we did. We had to do all of the things. I'm just not that, I'm not as successful when I try to multitask as I am when I'm able to just focus on what I'm doing and like knock it out of the park, then move on to the next thing. I don't think everybody is like that, but I'm learning that that's how I function more successfully where I'm happy and I'm rested and things actually get done. And I don't know, they're actually good or great, you know? So I'm curious. Um, I saw you nodding and <laughs> Andre, what, what do you think about that? Like, what do you feel? It's so funny to me because, you know, I'm, 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 I'm about to start my late twenties. I'm in a phase of my life where still all the pieces are coming together, especially around, having a partner I live with and like sharing all these household pieces. And so even thinking about like one, the multitasking, like just of our work, like I finally, you know, I've been complaining all of season one on the show about like all the recording. I'm, I feel like I can't manage my time. Da, 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 da. I'm finally like 95% in studio. Love it. But I'm, I've been in studio Monday through Friday, 10 to four every week. When does anything else happen? Mm. Do I get home and then work another three hours on the emails, on the marketing, on the social media? Do I get home and work another three hours on the auditions? And then to add that layer of running the household, like you said, Patrice, of being a human being, when does the laundry happen? Am I going to shell $60 a pound or whatever it costs to have someone else do it? And I, I, every day I wake up and I'm like, how did women ever do this all? Like, like, <laughs> I don't understand. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's so, it's so, it's, it's, it's shocking to me growing into life, how clearly difficult this has always been and, and watching other people, watching other adults, like acknowledge how much work all of it is together. Yeah. How about you, Lindsay? I mean, I am just in awe of people who do this work with with children, especially young children, because frankly, like, it's just me over here and I am struggling on a daily basis. Like, you know, and like Andre and Deanna both alluded to all the work that's not even in the booth, all the emails, all the prep, like the pre-read and the research and like the accent work and all that stuff that like I somehow frequently forget to factor in to like my sketch and then I'm like oh shit I need to spend another two three hours doing that (laughs) and that also has to go somewhere right it's not just booth time um and it's not even just booth and prep time it's like all the other stuff too 
it's all the hustle. And, you know, you're also doing all of the, um, Patrice, you're doing so many other mediums as well. Like I'm in awe of people who can switch gears like that because similar to Deanna, I am a one thing at a time person, unless I'm doing something that's like very low, um, that doesn't require much focus, right? Like I can listen to an audiobook and fold my laundry at the same time, but I cannot like listen to an audiobook and like write an email, you know, <laughs> like I couldn't do those two things. So I'm in awe of anybody who can multitask as well. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, probably I would say the only thing, but in, in its own way, you know, doing musical theater in particular, right? Cause you're acting, you're dancing, you're singing. Sometimes I would clarify, I'd be like, so in this moment, what is more important, the vocal or the step? Like, mm-hmm. do you want me to go full out in the dance? Because if I'm putting all of that energy into that, something's probably going to give, even if I try to control it, something's probably going to give on the vocal. Or I can concentrate on making sure that vocal's solid and I can give you the the feel. <laughs> Of yeah. that movement, you know what I mean? Um, yeah. Be, because uh, for people who have like been full out dancers, I remember people were um, like criticizing um, the woman. What's her name that hosted the Tony? She's getting ready to do it again, and she won an oh, Oscar. Uh, Ariana, Ariana mm-hmm, Debose. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she was dancing full out, and I, I think it was when she was. Um, uh, doing the Brit Awards or something like that. And people and, were like, oh, d- she can barely sing. I was like, because she's hoofing it. I was like, they're lifting her and throwing her. Of course she's going to be winded. I was like, but she's still doing it. I was like, so so none of y'all are used to like live performance because that that's what it is. It was just interesting to me. So as we were talking, the whole lifing part of it, right? Laundry, for some reason... When you said laundry, it was like, ging, 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 because it is the first thing that I will let go. <laughs> Oprah Thank you one for saying ta- that. Oh, on. my God. <laughs> one time, I remember Oprah <laughs> saying something like, you know, she always made sure she had, and I want to say it was like 30 pairs of underwear. So she could go a whole month and still have underwear to wear if she was like busy. Um, so I was like, well, if 30 works for Oprah, I'll get 60. I'm not saying I've gone 60 days without laundry, <laughs> but I can. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. I'm just saying. I mean, if uh-huh. I get back from a trip and I don't unpack a suitcase, it doesn't matter. Right? Because I have more underwear. <laughs> so in that, talking about like the balance, right, of of work and family, home, significant others, friends, and then outside of that, right? Actually going into studio to do the work, actually physically getting outside of your home in your booth to live life, right? To do things that you have to do, like go to the DMV or, you know, things that you want to do, like meet friends for lunch or dinner or drinks. So what, (laughs) when you are able to do that and find balance, like what would that look like for you, Patrice? I think that we have to learn how to give each other grace to know what particular season that we're in. Mm. Um, and make that normalized. Uh, when I did not have any children, I was able to do all the things and I was at all of the events and I was everywhere with everybody. Okay. But then once I had my son, there was a little shift. Then a pandemic hit. There was a huge shift. And then I had my daughter. And yet there was another shift. So I had to accept what was happening in my environment. And then what was also happening in my personal life. And to know that it's a season. Understand that it's a season. And those who are your ride or dies will understand the particular season that you're in and won't pressure you to be everywhere with everybody, right? Because sometimes you just can't make it. Whether yeah. it's, you know, I really need to vacuum. I really need to get this laundry done. 
you know what? I really need to make sure like I got dinner prep for the week. Or you just tired and you need to rest um, before you burn yourself out. Um, I think having a, a good support system of friends and family that understand where you are is helpful. So that way, when you do make a plan, and that's where I'm, the particular season that I'm at is I have to make a plan. And that plan is usually two, three weeks out. Um, and the way that um, my husband and I coordinate is that we actually have a joint calendar. So I can see when his gigs are, he understands when I'm recording or when I have this audition or when I need to be at this place. The social calendar is also on there too. You know, oh, Jackson has a dentist appointment because, you know, we've got to go to the doctor, all of those things. Everything is for us. Everything is in that joint calendar. So I could literally plug when, when my girlfriends are like, okay, I have these dates. Okay. He has nothing. Great. He can watch the kids. I'm plugging that in so that, and we respect, you know, that when, when somebody plugs something in. So that way, that's how we're able to kind of like juggle and, and, and join in that responsibility. Um, we really have to work in terms of dates. We're not very good at it, right? Still not very good at it, but you know, we try, um, because it's important to, to, to pour in, into each other as well. Um, yeah. so that way you just have something to talk about, you know, in your acting, in your life. I mean, that that lifing is what, you know, so much of what I use in, in the work, you know, whether it's, uh, I mean, it's all behind the mic, you know, yeah. whether it's, you know, the mic here, mic here, mic here. Two things from what you just said. One really quickly is um, making me re remember that like over the past three months, every time someone has asked me, how are you doing? I stop and say to myself, give an update that's not work related. Just find one update that's not work related. The other is, as you were describing these kind of like shifts that have happened for you over the past like half decade, it's really been making it that really, I think right now, just consolidated this reality for me that like, I remember who I was in college of like doing 13 extracurriculars and you've got a full class load and you're running around with the social life. You're staying up until 2 a.m. every day and you're getting the homework turned in. Da, da, da. And I feel like I often grieve the productivity mm. that I, that I envisioned or that I, that I like perceived myself as having in those times. Even when I was doing a, I had a, like a day job and was audiobook narrating, even that felt like a tier of multitasking that I feel like I struggle with right now. And I, I'm, I really appreciate this, uh, this like framing of seasons too, because I think also it's a, it's a matter of, I, f I feel like it, it actually takes a form of like healthy transformation to not expect that kind of degree of constantly being on or constantly working from yourself because we're never, you know, my ancestors want me to rest. <laughs> That's the vision. <laughs> well, it's funny. Look, it's funny that you say that, right? Because as as far as like multitasking, like it, sometimes in time crunches, right? Sometimes we are asked to do things with a certain time limit to it where there is nothing else we can do but get that work done. And sometimes we do have to double up time, you know, in order to get it done, whatever, and do more than one thing at once. To do that for a finite period is very different than living your life that way. And that's mm -hmm. what I mean by if I'm able to actually focus on what I'm doing, like that's a much happier, successful, enriching way um, to live. But also I'm proud of what I put out when I'm able to focus on it and make sure, you know, that I'm successfully completing it as opposed to going, well, that's all I could come up with in the time that was given to me. And that's going to have to be good enough, <laughs> you know, regardless of what it is. Um, and yes, our ancestors do want us to be able to rest. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, you know, it's, it's this whole thing. I mean, 
I had somebody say, <laughs> I had someone ask me, well, you know that we live in a capitalist society, right? And I, I don't think I'm ever going to forget that. No. <laughs> because yeah. I was kind of like, duh, yeah, I know. But in the back of my mind, I was like, but you know why it's a capitalist society, right? Like you, you know what the, what the purpose was, right? And, and yeah. you know what the end result was wished for, which was why it was created in the first place. Like, you know, it's about power, right? So that means other people have to be below in order for others to be above. Like you get that, right? But I, it's kind of one of those things, you know, where you see in the head, you know, you go inside and it's like the brain, it's like the bubble comes out and all of this was going through my head. And I was like, yeah, this is not the person to have this conversation with because <laughs> I don't think they're going to get it. The whole reason <laughs> you asked me that question is because you're in this capitalistic mode and what you're doing and you're trying to convince me that that is going to be successful for me when the very backs and bones of my people created that opportunity for you. And so that disconnect was just kind of like, mm, mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. working in partnership. And so mm -hmm. that's why I want to talk about support network in that and even bring you in on this part, Lindsay, where for me, that support network is not just family. It's not just significant others. It's not just friends, but it's the actual people we work with. Mm. Yeah. Well, and I wanted to expand for a moment on both Patrice's idea of giving yourself grace and Andre talking about rest and all of yeah. this. Is that like, and, and also the, the thinking of seasons in that broader way of like, and, and like Andre mentioned, grieving that lost productivity, because I have gone through that the past few years. Like the past few years have changed me on like this deep, what feels like molecular level, you know, and it's changed me. It's changed my relationship with work in general. Um, and also I think part of it is just aging, right? I'm in my late thirties now. Sure. 22 year old me was like, I, I would like, I was teaching and I was in theater every night, I was like biking to like five different places to teach a bunch of like third graders. And then I was in a show that night and then I would wake up the next morning. Like I was moving constantly and that was great. And that's awesome, but that's not at all who I am now. And, um, and I was talking to someone recently where they were like, I used to be able to do this many hours in a week and now I only do this many. And like, and it occurred to me, because sometimes I get caught up in that, like people do, some people do twice as much, they're twice as productive, they do this. But I'm like, I keep trying to come back to myself and be like, but what is your actual goal here? What do you want? And what I want is to do work that I like and to make enough money to pay all my bills and like maybe have a little left over. And that's it. And if I'm, con and if I'm achieving those goals, then like, I don't actually need to do, I don't need to lock myself in the booth for more hours or try to push beyond that. Because then if I can do that, I have the gift of like, go outside, look at a bird. Like no, that's better. Yeah. That's always better than working. You know, like work is great. And I love this work with all my heart, but like, Patrice, like hugging your daughter and going to do so and eating good food, like all of this is better than work. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> you know, so yeah. like any moment that I get to to spend doing that is a gift, and I shouldn't, I shouldn't be like pushing so hard to like scrub that out of my life in favor of work. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I'm sorry, you started talking about support systems, and I was like, but hang on, <laughs> but I, I mean, but the support system is all part of like, it's part of that realization too. I think. Yeah, Th this I feel like this network of connectivity is, it, it, it's it's. Uh, what's to say this whole conversation is a circle that like the same people that when you decide, am I going to prioritize my work or am I going to prioritize these relationships? Those choices are the support network, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, but no, it kind of mm -hmm. sort of depends. I, and I'll put it to you this way. Okay. I think that Patrice is very fortunate that she is in partnership with someone who understands uh, audio, mm. you know, mm -hmm. and how mm -hmm. important sound is and the absence of sound. Because to try to explain to someone that you're cohabitating with that refuses to be quiet. 
and they just like don't get it like it does not compute you know that 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 foot that foot shuffling that you do when you walk <laughs> i can hear it <laughs> it's coming through the microphone it's, it's coming through the microphone <laughs> you know the rustling you know of 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 those papers that you're going through in your filing cabinet like i can hear that <laughs> you know um no you can't watch tv while i'm i mean it has a subwoofer like thing on it right so yeah no <laughs> yeah i'm thinking of like my mom my mom coming to stay with me for a for like a week and i had to do some recording and some work and i was like just be quiet and immediately like bang bang but she's like i'm just I'm just tidying up your kitchen. I'm just, I'm being quiet. I'm being quiet. And I'm like, you're walking, you're moving, you're <laughs> picking things up and putting them down. Go somewhere else. <laughs> Absolutely. So, I, I mean, it was kind of one of those things. When I first started doing this work, I only recorded at night. Only at night. Because it was the only time, not just that it was the quietest outside, it was the quietest inside the house. Because nobody was doing anything because everybody was sleeping. <laughs> so I'm, I'm a little bit jealous, uh, Patrice, that, that you you have that built in. Um, and, you know, the fact that you've got this business. You know what I mean, though? Like, it, for us, it's common sense. Like, we just know because it's part of what we do every day. But it, it doesn't click. It doesn't compute for, you know, people who are not um, necessarily doing this work. So, I mean, I get what you're saying. Andre and I think yes, yes, the the persons that um, are part of your entourage, right? As a result of you making these decisions, they definitely can be your support network. But it, again, it's also the thing like when you go to Thanksgiving dinner, you know, and people are like, if you're single, they're like, "Do you have a boyfriend? Do you mm. have a girlfriend?" It's like, yeah. no, have I? Ever talked about dating anybody? Have I brought anybody here for you to, mm. you know, meet? So, you know, I'm not. So why are you bringing it up at the dinner table in front of the whole family? Or when are you going to get a real job? I was asked this question multiple times and we didn't have to be at the Thanksgiving table. I mean, when I felt like I was doing well to a certain extent, I actually sent my father a copy of my tax return. To just I stop love that it. So much. <laughs> I love I was that. Done. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> and I wrote it a sharpie on top of it. I was like, "I'm good. Love you." <laughs> yeah, yeah. Incredible, That's real. That's right? Real. It, but it, 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 yes, in essence, right? All of these people should comprise your support network, and those would be the people that would help you um, in partnership or yeah. moral support, you know, to take care of your responsibilities. Because look, even though this is fun and beautiful work that we do, it is work. And mm. I'm, I know that there are people who narrate as a hobby, right? But the majority of the people in the industry, that's not why they're doing it. Like they're paying their bills. They're, sending their kids to daycare and to private school and to college. They're buying homes, you know, they're doing things. They're doing necessary things with this money. It's not, you know, um, all fringe for mm. the majority of people. I feel pretty confident in saying that it's, it's a career choice and this is how we've decided to, um, you know, take care of those responsibilities. So I want to start with you, Patrice, in taking care of those responsibilities, because like you're talking about like your day and the fact that your two-year-old is still home too. Woo! So I can only imagine. <laughs> so let's say it's not your ideal day. Let's say you have to change everything up on the fly. Recording is just like not going to happen. You know, what What are um, the options, right, that you have with your support network, you know, to kind of remold, reschedule, you know, like what, what, what is that for you, you know, with, with your beautiful children? <laughs> 
Okay, so I'm partially delirious because I was up all night trying to make a deadline that didn't quite get made, but it got made, but it didn't get made. Um, It wasn't midnight. It was six, but it got made, right? Um, Because my daughter had a temperature of 103. And that was just the one day. But all weekend, right? Steve had pink eye on Friday. Jackson got an uh, ear infection on Saturday. Oh, oh. So, like, that was my weekend. Yeah. So, I literally stayed up all night uh, to finish. Um, I let um, the folks know, hey, listen, we've all been stricken. All of us. <laughs> And I tried to schedule myself with some kind of buffer. And luckily with this project, there was just, it was, there was just time. There was just time. So even with the buffer I gave me, I still ended up needing extra buffer because we all were just like, boom, 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 domino effect here. Um, And uh, I don't even remember the other part of your question. I'm just thinking about. (laughs) She's reliving. Oh no. Look, I even (laughs) forgot. I even forgot the rest of my question. You were like, we had pink eyes. There was a fever. The way uh, for, huh? for the listeners, her eyes grew when that question landed. She, was, she saw it. That's, that's painting the picture in audiobooks. You see the like, image. Literally, I'm like, okay. I'm Ain't about nothing to but respect. It. Nothing but respect. Oh, my God. Mm-hmm. Like, I literally had the steamer next to me. Mm. I had my water. I did a straight, a strict um, Pomodoro and mm. just boom, boom, boom. And I made sure that five minute mark drank, 15 minute mark steam, boom, boom, boom to get it off. Mm. Uh-huh. <laughs> mm. Like literally. And that's, and that's how I made it because I, when I, t- but the great thing is, is I'm no longer congested too. Cause I started out the night congested <laughs> myself. <laughs> And just like, okay, we're gonna we're gonna get through this. We're gonna do this. And it's gonna oh be my. all right. And you just kind of have to laugh and giggle because it was just one night. Yeah. It's not mm-hmm. all the time. You know? Sometimes mm-hmm. life lives. Yes. And it's just gonna have to be okay. You know what I mean? And there are so many other things that are happening in the world. It's gonna be okay. You know, mm-hmm. be honest with where you're at. Give grace to yourself. Mm-hmm. Hope, hopefully, the people that you are working with, so that's community. Yeah, understand, have an understanding of of what it is. Be honest. There's no reason to lie. This is what it is. I'm sorry. It doesn't happen all the time. You know. Yeah. It's just a moment. Yeah. It's just a moment. You know. Um, and just try not to be hard on yourself and laugh about it. You know, so as soon as I, you know, hang up with you guys, I, I'm I'm going to bed. Good. <laughs> as it for be two bad. days, <laughs> right? <laughs> just like a light coma, just like a mini mini coma. What I? <laughs> oh bit. my god! You know, I've what? got time before the next project. I mean, with the thing about the crazy part about it is that I did three things back to back. So that was part yeah. of the whole mm-hmm. delir- delirium of it all. I don't right. normally schedule myself out like that. I typically give myself space just because of the season of where I'm at with the kids yeah. being so small with things. Mm-hmm. I was like, oh, but these books are short. It'll be all right. <laughs> Famous last words. Right. <laughs> right. I said that recently too, girl. <laughs> that last one, it was like, this is really happening. This is really happening. Accept it and give yourself grace. It's going to be all right. See, it was yeah. going through something like that that really made me, and, and then adding in LA traffic, Andre knows when I have to drive, like it's never close. I mean, I've been on a Zoom with him for hours and I was still in traffic trying to get oh home. Like, uh, girl. Do you know what I mean? So, like, even with that, with like the commuting things like that, I that's why Patrice will always be my girl because I was like, she just does it. 
She just does it mm-hmm. and gets it done. Yeah. I don't even have to do all that. Yeah. And then even the financial uh, responsibilities and necessities of things, you are still able to like piece and like figure things out along with your schedule, along with your partner, along with your children um, and still be active in the community. Huh? Mm. Um, Pick and choose. Yeah. Because I want to be able to do everything. Right. But I, I, I just I just can't, you know, um, so I just pick and choose and, you know, current. And know that I don't have to, you don't have to say in everything that you're a part of. Uh, say it Sometimes again. Sometimes you, you, mm-hmm. you grow. And so then you move on to the next thing. Mm. And then you're part of that. You know what I mean? You establish those relationships and things of that nature. So you, you, you have to kind of move like the water. Mm. You know? Just yeah, yeah. let it flow. Let it flow. And the and the water constantly moves, but it's also changing. And and it just it doesn't stay stagnant. And that's and that's how I, I how how I also view in terms of, you know, you know, how I move. That's how you grow. That's how you mm-hmm. grow. You know, you don't always necessarily have to be a part of this. You know what I mean? Sometimes it's like, okay, you know, I'm just going to check this out. Oh, this is great. This is wonderful. You take what you need and then you move on. Not everything Mm -hmm. is meant to be a lifetime. Two things for me related to that. One is uh, when you said, when you said, and you move on from something, I thought you meant like, you leave the event early. And I was like, yes, leave the event early. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, like, that too. My, That's what I'm saying. Like, and I was like, oh, no, she's talking about bigger things. Okay. <laughs> and the other thing I think might escape me if I don't remember it. Oh, uh, this idea of being okay, not going to everything. I learned that at the scale of like even all the conferences that like are <sighs> for voice actors. Everyone's mm-hmm. talking about like, oh, mm-hmm. I, I feel this FOMO leaving. And mm-hmm. I do. But it's also like, I'm not flying to 15 states this year. Like, I'm not. Do- no, thank you. I'm good. Like, my bank's good. Everybody's good. Everybody's I'm gonna good. I'm going to stay home. And I'll see, I'll see y'all on Instagram when you share the pictures. Mm-hmm. And life is going to go on. But I, but I understand. It was, it was great, Patrice, hearing you say, like, not everything is for you in this lifetime, too. Because mm-hmm. sometimes, you know, I can feel that, like, anxiety that sense of like grasping for something and being like well i want this and i want this and i need to put all i need to grab each thing that pops up in front of me and put it in my little basket um but you know but you but you can't but ca- <laughs> it always comes back to capitalism mm-hmm. listen you're not wrong you're not wrong um and you know and and but like some of it is from a like artistic fulfillment place, right? Like I want to do all the cool things and tell all the cool stories. I want to meet all the interesting people. I want to form all the beautiful connections, but also like I want to rack up the numbers or I want to make more money or I want to like, ooh, or if I don't take advantage of this opportunity, there's going to be an emptiness behind it. And I'm going to be like, I need to, I need to grab onto every rung of this ladder to make it to the top. Like, so it's a mixture of those things, but it's beautiful hearing you talk about being like water and flowing through it yeah. and letting some of those things go and doing it with with grace, right? Because if you're really, if you're still feeling that like, oh, like regret or anxiety about letting it pass you, then you're not, you're not benefiting from that, from letting it go. Truly. Right? Like if you're not, if you're, that feeling is still there. So like truly like, I bless you. I let you go. Like, let it yeah. let it find somebody else and be at peace with that. I think that's so beautiful. My my sister said something to me a few years back and it and it stuck with me. She said, you know, Patrice, anything that's for you will is for you. Like no one mm. can take it away. And you're not gonna miss it. And that's that's really sort of just how I've been able to just be at peace you know, with not being, you know, everywhere all the time. Because let me tell you something. In my 20s, I was out in these streets. Very much so. Mm -hmm. Um, But, you know, through time, through change, um, my body not functioning the same way that it did, Mm -hmm. you just 
You, you just can't, you know, and something's got to give responsibility changes, mm. you know, mm-hmm. um, and you just you have to sort of prioritize. You have to prioritize, you know, and if that event, if that class, if that conference, if it's meant for you to do it, it will happen. You don't mm. have to force it. Yeah, it will happen. Yeah. The opportunity will will make its way to you, and you just be open to receive it when it happens. Yeah. Be ready, stay ready, so you don't have to get <laughs> ready. That's right. <laughs> but it's this yeah. it's this whole thing, right? Because I never, as I was becoming a performing artist, as I was studying, as I was beginning to do the work. I never thought necessarily to limit myself in what I was doing in the field, right? Mm. Because to me, it was all the work, all Mm. capital letters, right? Whereas now, I kind of find I get a little bit of judgment of, well, why do you have to be you know, multidisciplinary? Like, why why do you feel like you have to do all these different things? You know why? Because nobody's trying to pay me to do one thing and pay all of my bills. And to me, I have skills that allow themselves to be used, whether it's on camera, whether it's only on the mic, whether it's full singing voice, you know, whether it's for anime. Mm -hmm. So there's that, right? But then there's kind of sort of like that flip side of... (laughs) One of the things I like to say is I'm just me. And they're like, oh, because some people can't stand that word just. And for me, right. it's it doesn't have a negative connotation. It's me putting you on notice to let you know I can just do what I can do because I'm just me. So, no, I can't mm-hmm. blah, 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 <laughs> because I'm already blah, 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 blah. Do you know what mm-hmm. I mean? Like, I, yeah. it's interesting to me because I I find boundaries freeing Mm. whereas Mm. some Mm. people just can't stand it when you have a boundary Mm. and i'm paraphrasing because i cannot remember exactly how she said it but andy art one time said the only people who will ever be upset when you finally create boundaries for yourself are the people who benefited from the fact that you didn't have them in the first place. Mm -hmm, Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. (laughs) So that's the other side of it. Right. And it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if it's, you know, people who are offering you work. So actual producers or casting directors, doesn't matter if it's your significant other, (laughs) you know what I mean? Doesn't matter if, um, doesn't matter if it's children, right? Because some of us have older children, you know, who have lived some life and gained some other kind of skills and in, in um, different ways of communicating <laughs> that might fall into, um, you know, realms of trying to manipulate situations to get whatever the result is, right? That any one person at any given time would want. Whether that's you do the book faster <laughs> or... You don't record it all because I want to go to the park, you know, whatever it is. Um, But I find, I find that kind of interesting. Sometimes you're just trying to be, and it's not necessarily you, right? It's kind of sort of these outside forces kind of putting maybe what their challenge or hang up is kind of like projecting that on you. Like I said, like to kind of flip and kind of go, well, if only, you know, (laughs) I don't know. It's kind of interesting, right? Because like how Patrice was saying, living a life actually gives her material, gives her information Mm -hmm. to put into the artistry, right? Of of actually doing the work Mm -hmm. of being an actor, of telling these stories. And sometimes you kind of are able to go through a therapeutic process or um, a a, a process of visualization or realization that gives you an epiphany, right? Of maybe a truth. Um, And it all kind of comes through the work. Um, 
I don't know. I just find it very interesting, right? Because we're all kind of interconnected. I think we have a great community, which is fantastic. But when you go outside of the community, of audiobook people who really understand what the process is and what you're putting into it. And yeah, I'm sitting in a chair, but I'm sitting in a chair for so many hours and I'm literally putting everything into all of these words. It's a lot. And the perception, I guess, of other people on, on, on how they see that can affect us, right? Can affect us and our work. Um, Mm -hmm. Maybe sometimes even the judgment that we have on ourselves or the value that we place on what we're doing, Mm -hmm. even though that's not coming from us per se. I don't know. That's why in the very beginning, I love, you know, giving each other grace. Like Patrice and I are accountability partners and I use that in the loosest term possible because when we are busy, we're like, hey, think about you. And that's it. Just a text. Boom, an emoji, boom. But then when we have time, we're like, girl, I got into this thing and I did this and I sent this person and this is what happened and I got an audition and we get into it and we just pick it up. And we don't yeah. have that, um, we don't have that pressure that we put on each other to mm. uh, be constantly available to one another mm-hmm. for every mm-hmm. little step of a thing because both of us are trying to live a life and we give each other that um and that's why i say i mean we are accountability partners but it's loose y'all it's so loose and it's beautiful (laughs) no listen it it was some of my audiobook friends that got me into voice notes for this reason on my phone because like i was reluctant i was reluctant i'm an elder millennial i was like i will text you or i will I mean, I won't call you on the phone because, again, elder millennial. But, like, <laughs> what, what are all these voice notes? How am I supposed to listen to them and find a place, you know? But I, I got talked into it because – and now I love them, especially for communicating with my narrator friends, because it's like this delayed phone call where, like, yeah. I will sit down and leave, like, a 10-minute voice memo. Be like, this is what's going on. This is what I'm frustrated by. This is what's going great. Like, just jabber on for 10 minutes and then send it off to a friend or the group chat. And with the knowledge that, like, listen when you can. Like, I might hear from you in an hour. I might hear from you in two days with your own response, like, with their own 10-minute message where they're like, here's how I feel about all that. It's amazing. And it's it's beautiful. And nobody is like, well, I can't believe they haven't. It's like, I'll hear from you when I hear from you. I just sent my little message out. Can't wait. (laughs) I love that. I always say getting voice notes from voice actors is like having a little podcast, like a personalized podcast. (laughs) I have a group of friends that our group chat is on Marco Polo, which mm. he absolutely love. <laughs> <laughs> um, and and over the years we've got, gotten like spread out, and so that's really just been wonderful and worked for us because it's giving FaceTime without without having to feel the pressure of being in real time. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's. That's been, oh my God, that app has been a blessing um, for me. Hmm. I like it. Okay. (laughs) So we've talked about, actually we've talked about a lot. This has been so good, but like, I want to talk about something that's challenging for me. Out of all this time trying to live life, you know, I'm not a hundred percent sold on the concept of work-life balance because the industry I work in is built on getting to the place of creating that opportunity. So there's the chance that you could be unemployed for a while, right? Kind of out of your control, right? Because Mm -hmm. you're not booking what you're auditioning for or the work isn't just there, right? Um, Since it's, you know, gig work. So vacation so back in the day i took my vacations on other people's dimes so i would take work Mm. away right national tours international tours sit downs just if they're paying for the transportation and the accommodation and then i would use my dark days my down days to do my vacaying right? (laughs) 
So it wasn't really until I got older that I actually took vacations and things. And now I'm at the point where if I don't have to turn on a light or speak, that's a vacation. Mm -hmm. So what, what is the, I'll start with you, Patrice. What is the um, kind of process for you? Cause I, I know you travel. Yeah. So what is the process for you going on vacation? It is intentional. I want to say within somewhere around like the fifth or sixth year, I can't remember exactly what year it was. It was right in the middle of all the struggle. And my husband had gotten a gig in France. And at that point, I had never been to France. And some friends were amazing and pulled together and bought me a ticket so I could go to France and meet him on his gig. So that was my first time in Paris, and it was absolutely amazing. And we realized, wow, we have not like taken time to go on vacation. And from that trip, we decided to be intentional and start a vacation fund. So we don't, we sort of base our our decision on where we're going based on whatever it is that we have in the fund. So that determines, you know, our destination um, for the most part. And it's been great. Um, I, I, again, because of the philosophy of nothing that's for me will pass me by, I respect the book out. I was in a situation, literally, I was at the airport getting ready to go to Spain. Um, and I, Jackson and the baby um, husband at the gate, I get an email. Can you record this audition, Patrice? Um, I'm at the airport, is what the email said. <laughs> Okay, um, they really need this tomorrow. You know, you can do a voice note. You can do it on the plane. And I'm like, I'm like, on the plane. So I was like, all right, you know, I, I can't make no promises. I, I just let's let's see. You know, I'll I'll let you know. And it was in that moment I realized just how noisy the plane actually is. Yeah. I never noticed how noisy the plane was until oh, they yeah. I was like, the plane is noisy i can't think i'm literally like i'm wearing the baby and i was like i'm not doing this i was like it's too much Mm -hmm. i am anxious just thinking about it we're not doing this so when i landed i emailed back the producers like listen i'm sorry um I i can't make it happen please have them consider listening to my demo and I left it at that and enjoyed my two weeks away. Mm-hmm. When I got back, hey, Patrice, you'll never believe it, but you booked it. They were not <laughs> impressed with anyone's audition and loved your demo. I'm exhausted. <laughs> Just hearing that. <laughs> Again, anything that is for you will not pass you by. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I put in a lot of work in those demos Mm -hmm. they were paid for an investment was made and I knew right you know because the work was already done that Mm -hmm. I could show myself you know in the best light I was already prepared so believe in the preparation that you already have had done it will speak and work for itself I mean but that's because I respected the book out I wouldn't normally do that obviously if I was home I would have done the audition no problem Mm -hmm. but you know I had to stand on where I was at and if I tried if I honestly would have tried to do that audition there would have been a hot bubble of mess Mm mm-hmm you know, because it was so, I couldn't think. It's so noisy. <laughs> you know, and then again, I was wearing the baby. Mm. Um, yeah. <laughs> you had plenty going on. <laughs> plenty going on. It was too much going on. It, yeah. 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 This, so, this is so real. So yeah. real. 
I, yeah. I had to, I had to think about this twice today because I, there were two things that came up and not even, not even like direct offers, like here's work, like at the audition level. Right. And I think sometimes that has its own where you're like, Oh, like I won't, I know I won't be available possibly, but like maybe I'm going to send the audition. And if I get it, I get it. If I don't, I don't. And I think that's its own kind of same conversation, but I, they were both in July and I have, I've blocked out for myself. I'm taking off a month this summer. And it's partially because a couple weeks ago, both my partner and I realized in our respective spaces, we are on the edge of burnout. Mm -hmm. We are working too much. We are prioritizing the work and neglecting the, all these back choices that we've been talking about and missing out on opportunities for connection. And so we wanted to step back and like take time and take a break. And so these two things came up in that window and that question of like, oh, but it, you know, it, it's something I put into my schedule. It's not a, like I'll be out of the country. I'll be at home. Maybe I could just squeeze one. In. And it's so real because as soon as it slides, the, the rest of the hill falls. Like you have mm -hmm. to respect that time that you make. And I feel like that's been this, uh, I think, tremendous battle because one, we often are fighting for projects that make us feel good about the art that we're doing. And to see something like that come onto our plate and then to say no mm -hmm. feels like a betrayal sometimes okay. of all these kind of ideas we've put together about what our work is. And two is I can say and say and say like my ancestors want me to rest and like do the opposite of what JP Morgan Chase would want you to do out of spite and like all these different things. And I've also been raised with the, the capitalist hunt in my head. I've been raised with these expectations of like, you can do it all. Like this is going to be, I, when we mm -hmm. get to the end of the year and some people do their like year in review and they're like, I did 560 hours this year. I'm like, are you, are you okay? Like, let's like real, real. Are you good? Like, are you yeah. good? And I think that like, there's no way for us to make it through without that time to not just be actors, mm -hmm. to be, to have hobbies, to connect, to, you know what I mean? And, and, and I, I feel like it, the hardest thing is to make that time actively and then to treat it as if it's been booked. If I had, if someone had booked me into the studio for the same week that I had booked a, a break for myself, I wouldn't, I wouldn't offer that to someone. So I wouldn't say like, oh, you have an audition? Like maybe I'll do it even though I know something else is happening. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I think that kind of seriousness, treating your rest with that kind of seriousness mm -hmm. fundamentally changes how you show up to things. It fundamentally Absolutely. changes how, how whether you're willing to do a random you know weekend job whether you're willing to like someone's like you can do this and you know the the rate and the budget kind of suck but like it'll be some great exposure and i'm like exposure is how people die in the winter thank you very much <laughs> like getting to <laughs> this space i think where you where you respect your time like i feel like that is the peak of what people say of like you are the CEO of your small business is respecting your mm -hmm. rest time as if it were your work time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You need time to be a person. And in fact, sometimes with, with that, like when I have struggled with that in the past, cause goodness knows I have, sometimes I even will force myself to like go to it. Like if I, if I feel like, I don't know if I can do that if I'm at home, cause I fall prey to the same thing. It's like, well, my booth is right there. I can see it with my eyes. I could do, I could do more work. I could do, like, and even if I don't have a job, like a, a, an audition, but like I could, I could refresh my samples. I could go on and find things to audition for. I could like, there's always, because they're in this job and in any freelance job, there's always something you could be doing. You know, I could be writing more emails. I could be doing more research. I could be blah, blah, blah. And so for me, sometimes it's helpful to be like, I'm going to go somewhere else even if it's not a full-blown vacation, even if it is like the chintziest staycation possible, even if it's like I went to the, I took the Amtrak train one town over and now I'm in a ho like a reasonable hotel or whatever yeah. that has like a fun pool or whatever it is like just to be like, I'm not home. So I literally can't. I literally have physically put a barrier between like me and my home where my work is. So like, mm, I, ca I can't. 
I can't. And so sometimes that'll help me like maintain those boundaries and also like help me fully rest or let go because, you know, and, and I'm, I'm sure you all experience this, not just work, but just like being in your home and looking around and going like, oh, well, I need to hang those pictures and I need to, you know, organize that shelf and I need to clean that and I need to do the laundry and like, and sometimes that can be integrated with your rest. Like sometimes that nesting or like, you know, doing like gentle domestic tasks can be part of your like, this is a restful sort of slow day for me. But sometimes I'm like, I just need to be in a whole other place where there's literally no work for me to do. Like, I'm not going to clean the hotel room. So like, <laughs> it's done. We're done. <laughs> like, I have to, I have to rest. I have to relax. Um, so yeah, that's, that's somehow, sometimes how I approach it. Yeah. But that's, that's what I meant. Even just physically going, you know, I, I'm just going to be quiet. I'm just going to be quiet mm. today. Mm. I'm just going to be quiet. We really could go anywhere with this. Um, there's lots of different things we can choose to include in what would be the balance of our work and personal life responsibilities, um, choices, goals, enjoyment. So I'm going to finish with this. Is the sky the limit? As a question, is the sky the limit? And my answer is, does it have to be? Which could be why. But I think what I said is more fun. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think, Patrice? Um, the only limits there are the limits that we put on ourselves. If the sky is the limit, then it is. If you're seeing beyond the sky and see the entire galaxy, if you're seeing beyond the galaxy, you know, whatever that infinity world is that you connect with, then, you know, that's 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 what you're reaching. That's what you're what you're looking to touch. Um, but it's it's a mindset. It's a mindset, I think. Yeah. And I think our bodies have limits our bodies are finite time is finite like there are physical realities that we have to operate within which can be maddening at times sometimes i'm like oh all these physical realities <laughs> i would rather do without um but we are operating within those boundaries that are placed upon us right by having a human body with needs we do have to stop and eat at some point we have to sleep <laughs> we have to like do these things but i think the sky is the limit in terms of like the different lives and solutions that we can imagine for ourselves um, and the different like configurations that we can put together and the different boundaries we can set and the different um, perspectives we can take on this work and this life and balancing the two in a, in a, in a, in being, in being the river as Patrice said. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like this conversation is affirming for me that the impossible, unimaginable, unimaginable like future that I want for myself isn't the one where I'm doing everything and working all the time and always on the grind and hustle. It's the one where I am hitting goals and achieving achieving dreams with the backdrop of like a soft, thoughtful, well paced life. Right. That's the thing that I want to find for myself. Yeah. I'm going to make a t-shirt out of it. I mean, I'm not going to make it. Anybody here wants to make it? Or if you I'm make keeping it a list, there, girl. Email me. I'm going to give it to you. I'm going to give it to you. I'm going to give it to you right now. But if you make it, I want my cut. My multiverse is a mindset. What? My okay, multiverse wait. is a mindset. Mm. 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 Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Patrice Williams, for joining us for this episode of the Narrator Roundtable. Bye, girl. It's all that and more. Yes. <laughs> Thanks, y'all, so much. I look, This was a good time. This was a really good time. Thank you. Thank you for having me. So hype. Thank you. Thank you so much for being here. Seriously. So, y'all, if you have not 
subscribe to the podcast. It is everywhere. It is literally everywhere. Apple, Spotify, Audible, and we're on YouTube. Hit the subscribe button so you can enjoy more of these delightful conversations. And if you want to join the conversation, you can find us on social media. We're on TikTok, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, or you can visit our website, which is narratoroundtable.com. And you can submit a question, right? Or a topic of discussion for any future episode, because we really want to know what you think, because we definitely want to talk about it. So bring it. (laughs) Thanks and bye. The Narrator Roundtable is produced and hosted by Andre Santana, Deanna Anthony, Gail Shallon, Kurt Graves, and Lindsay Dorcas. All copyrighted material is shared with permission. Music and sound effects are licensed through Storyblocks Audio. All opinions shared are those of the individuals and do not reflect the positions or policies of any company or organization with which they happen to be associated.